You know, I, I wanted to go, and I use that past tense, I wanted to go to Yankee Stadium. If it were the older Yankee Stadium, it really would have meant something to me. The new stadium doesn't mean anything, but just the thought of playing the Yankees in New York would be fun. However, when you look at the schedule, you will see that there is a night game with the Yankees in New York. The Dodgers play the following night in San Diego. And I looked at that schedule and I thought, you know, I don't want to put these old bones through that kind of a trip. So as much as I would love to go to Yankee Stadium, I don't think so because of the rigors of that trip. That's tough. We'll miss you then, Penny. Well, bless you for that. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, you have such a uh, rich anecdotal history. When you go into a game, do you have stories you prepare to bring into the oh, game? No. Or is it no, no. Okay. Uh, many times I will drive home thinking, oh my gosh, why didn't I mention that? Or why didn't I say that? No, uh, I don't. I I've never prepared. I remember when Henry Aaron hit his famous home run. And after the home run, uh, we had done it on radio, and George Plimpton, a pretty famous writer, he wrote paper, Tiger, a paper lion, and a whole bunch of books. And George was there covering the home run. And he went to everybody asking them about the home run. And he came to me finally, and he said, did you have something prepared to say uh, for that famous home run? And I said, no, I, I would be scared to death. I said, you prepare something, you think it's so precious and wonderful that you've prepared it in advance. And I said, you might say it, and it doesn't count. I said, if you remember, on Aaron's home run, Bill Buckner climbed the fence of the bullpen and almost caught it. Clinton was not a baseball fan, and he said, was Bill Buckner good at that sort of thing? And I said, no, George, nobody is good. He just climbed the fence. But no, in all honesty, I have never, ever prepared. Sometimes it works once in a rare you just get a God-gifted line from out of the sky. Like Gibson's home run. I mean, I was in shock, just like everybody else, and blurted out a, a reasonably good line. <laughs> when, when Henry hit his home run, and I am kind of proud of the fact my mind worked that way, I shut up for about a minute and a half. That's a long time on radio. The, uh, the longest laugh as I understand it in radio history, was a Jack Benny radio show. Benny was a cheap guy, supposedly, on the show. He's walking down the street, and he's held up by a gunman who says, your money or your life. And there's a pause, and the gunman says, well, and Benny says, I think you, I think you. That laugh was one of the longest ever. When Henry hit his home run, I got up. There was nothing else to say. The crowd went bananas, fireworks, his parents were on the field. So I walked to the back of the booth, and it gave me a chance to collect my thoughts. So then, a minute and a half later, I went back on the air, and that's when I said what a dawn of me. What a moment this was. Here was a black man in the deep south being honored for breaking the record of a white icon. This was not just a great night for Atlanta or Henry. It was a great night for the country, and God knows maybe for the world. And I was kind of proud, no, not proud, I was grateful that I had gotten that thought during that minute and a half. Yeah. Yes, sir, one more and I'm going to have to pack it in. Um, you, you've often said uh, how much respect you have for others that, that do your job. Do you have any uh, favorites among the other broadcasters that, that come here and visit? Well, I like them all personally, and of course, as you understand, when I'm working, they're working. So I'm not listening to them at all. But uh, I think I have a really good relationship with uh, all of the other broadcasters. Yeah, And I enjoy swapping stories with them. Uh, if they have one, they'll, they'll tell me. If I have one, I'll tell them. Interesting, before the game yesterday, uh, I was telling John Rooney 
I said, we have a kid, not that he's that young, but we have a kid that no one seems to realize with the big names like Gonzalez and Ramirez and all that stuff, Kemp and Ethiopia. I said, but keep an eye on this kid Cruz. He's uh, remarkable. <laughs> Boom. So when I see John tonight, I'll just kind of smirk. <laughs> so if I really knew something. You know. Anyway, if you, I really enjoy this. I'm sorry I'm under the gun. I have to go to the booth and prepare my carefully prepared ad lib. <laughs> Thank you so much.